Hey girls, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some triple XL acrylic nails. I have not tried not polish before. I don't really do acrylic nails. So let's go ahead and see what I got for this video. I do want to start by saying I did purchase this. This was not sent to me or anything. So this is definitely a honest review and tutorial. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of the items. You do get a lot of shipping paper to protect your items, so I'm just going to quickly remove all of that. I didn't actually know that Not Polish sold this, but after watching a video from Nails by Key, I seen that Not Polish actually has a neutralizer. So that's what this is. You just put a few drops of this in your monomer and it's supposed to take away the monomer smell, which is honestly why I don't do acrylic nails. It's very strong in my opinion. I feel like I have a sensitive nose and I don't want the smell all over the house. So I wanted to try this. For the actual acrylics, I did get a few of them. I got kind of the basic colors. I actually looked a lot on their Instagram for different nudes and I think I liked this one the best for most of the nail sets. So this first one here is the one ounce jar of nude. This is called Nude Panther. So these acrylics do come sealed to try to prevent the acrylic from leaking out, which I did not experience any of in this packaging. Here's what that acrylic looks like. It's very fine. I love the color of it. I am excited to swatch out these acrylics. I also really love the jars. I think their packaging is really cute. The second acrylic color that I got is called Princess Slippers. I was very hesitant on getting a pink acrylic because I don't really do a lot of pink nails, but I did actually like this pink color for some of the sets that I've seen, so I figured I would go ahead and get a pink acrylic as well. The next color that I got is another basic. This is called White. This is just a white acrylic powder. It does look a little bit thicker than the other colors, and I hear a lot of people talking about how white acrylic is more difficult to work with, so I am a little bit intimidated by trying this color since I am a beginner at acrylic. Acrylic. And the last color that I got is actually the two ounce jar. So this one is like huge compared to the other ones. This one is called Cash Me and it's a really pretty mint color. I didn't actually plan it or realize it, but this color kind of matches the color that I have on my other hand, which is one reason why I did not use it for this video, but I absolutely love this color. The next thing that I got is definitely because of Nails by Vic here on YouTube. I love watching her videos and she uses these nail tips all the time. These are the Triple XL tips. They are square C-curve nail tips. I am so excited. I love long nails and I love how her sets always come out. I do have a strong opinion on how the foundation of your nail determines how your nails turn out. So in my opinion, investing in good nail tips is definitely a must. So here's what the nail tip looks like. I really do like these. I'm excited to try these out. I'm just going to quickly show you how it looks against my nail. As you can see, they're definitely long and I actually really like the shape of them. They don't have a well or anything, so it's just the solid nail tip. They do fit my thumbnails, which is awesome. They actually have sizes that are too big for me, which is a really big surprise because I typically struggle with that, finding nail tips that fit my thumbnails. So yeah, those are the nail tips. And of course, to do the acrylic, I did get the EMA monomer. This is supposed to be a low odor monomer. I didn't smell anything from the box, which means that this did not leak. They did wrap this very well to try to prevent the monomer from leaking. And once I opened that little clear wrapping, I did start to kind of smell the monomer a little bit. So I am going to quickly try and see what this smells like. They do have this little cap thing. I was so confused. I was like, do I take it off? Do I poke a hole in it? I was so unsure. So I did end up just taking it out. I think that's what you're supposed to do, but I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Once I opened it, I did get a really good smell of that monomer smell. I personally don't mind the smell. I actually really like it, but it's very, very strong and it lingers very badly. So I was a little bit disappointed that this monomer smells more than I thought it would. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the nail set. So I do already have my nails prepped how I want for this manicure. I do have some nude gel polish and a layer of pill base on my nails for easy nail removal. I do this because I do my nails very frequently. So after the nail prep, I am going to take the triple XL nail tips and I'm going to go ahead and place the nail tips on my natural nails. 
Of course, when you're sizing for your nail tips, you want to make sure that it goes from sidewall to sidewall. You don't want to have any gaps on the sides of your nail and you don't want the nail tip to be too big. So I'm just going to go ahead and size out all of the nail tips for my nails. I was just a little bit confused when picking out my sizes because the way they have them laid out in the box, I might actually go ahead and rearrange that just to make it a little bit easier for me. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and size out all of the other nails. Once I have my nail tip sizes picked out, I'm going to go ahead and glue them on. I am using Dip Base, which is number two from Double Dip Nails. This is actually a resin for dip powder, but I like to use this as nail glue as well. I don't notice any issues when I glue my nail tips on with this, so that is just what I like to use. I'm going to go ahead and glue all of the nail tips on. It's actually a little bit difficult to glue nail tips on that are this length because if they're the slightest bit off, they're going to look super crooked and you definitely don't want that for your nails. So gluing this on does take a little bit of practice. So here are the nails. I love the length and shape of these nail tips. I was thinking to cut a little bit of length off, but I figured I haven't actually done long, long nails. So I figured I would go ahead and try that since these are triple XL nail tips. So I'm just going to take my diamond dappen dish and I'm going to be putting my monomer in here. So first I am going to take the neutralizer. This kind of smells like a candy peach type of scent. I really like the smell of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few drops into the dappen dish. On the back it does say to put like 5 or 8 drops, but I put a little bit more just to try to eliminate that monomer smell. I'm just going to pour a little bit of the EMA monomer inside of the dish. I do have a paper towel here to wipe away all of the excess acrylic and monomer from the brush. I am just taking my acrylic brush and I'm going to push out all of the air bubbles and make sure that the brush is ready for the acrylic. Again, I am not a pro at this. This is basically like my first time doing acrylic in a really long time. This, by the way, is an acrylic brush that I got from Sally Beauty. This is an oval 8 and I did get the size because of Nail Career Education. She does use this size a lot, so I figured it might be good for beginners. So I am just going to go ahead and swatch out these acrylic powders just to get a feel for acrylic again and just swatch out all of these colors to see how they look. So I'm just starting by getting the brush filled with monomer. I'm going to clean one side of the brush and tap, tap, tap into the acrylic to pick it up. And that is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and put it onto the paper towel and smooth it out a little bit. And that is the first color, which is called Cash Me. I'm going to clean the brush and go ahead and do the same thing for the other three colors as well. So I do want to say that this is basically my first time doing acrylic. I played around with it about eight years ago, but it was nothing serious. And I never actually did a full set of nails, like a full hand or anything. I just did a few practice nails, maybe some swatches of different colors. Colors, but I never actually really practiced with acrylic or took it very seriously so I do actually consider this like my first time really working with acrylic. Since that experience with acrylic I have watched hundreds and thousands of videos of applying acrylic as well as tips and tricks for applying it. I have also worked a lot with poly gel which is very similar in the aspect of the sculpting part of the nail enhancement so I do have pretty high hopes for this nail set. So here are those four swatches of acrylic. I think these colors are super pretty, so let's go ahead and move on to the application. So as I did with the swatches, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up my acrylic bead. I am using the white acrylic. This is probably a bad idea for me to start with this since I never work with acrylic, but it is what it is. I'm just going to place that on the tip of the nail, and as you can see, I picked up kind of a watery bead. At least I do feel like it's runny. I mean, it's not like dripping off the nail or anything, but it does move a little bit easier than I was expecting. I'm just going to go ahead and try to smooth this out over top of the nail. I do want to get this as smooth as possible because I don't like filing. So if I can do a good acrylic application, I won't have to spend hours filing the nails. So I'm just going to try and get this as smooth and even as I can. I am trying to continually remember to wipe the brush on the paper towel to prevent having any acrylic stuck in the bristles, which is something that I was experiencing years ago when playing around with acrylic. I don't really know if you're supposed to like dip the brush back into the monomer to smooth it out. I never really paid attention to that part with acrylic application. And because the bead was a little bit runnier, I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not, but that's just what I did. I am going to be doing quite a lot of beads just to cover the tip of the nail with white. 
I don't know what I did wrong here, but the color basically only stuck to the tip of the nail like it didn't want to go on my nail bed area and I didn't want to bring this color all the way into my nail bed. So I just kind of like left it like that. <laughs> By the way, for me trying acrylic for the first time in a really long time, I am trying some really difficult techniques. I am going to be doing ombre. I'm going to be doing marble with an ombre over top of that. And on top of that, I am doing extra, extra, extra long nails, which is probably one of the worst combinations that I could have picked, but I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to create a really beautiful nail design. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a tough nail set for me, but I'm definitely up for the challenge. I am going to be doing the same thing to the index nail as well because this one is going to be an ombre as well. One thing I'm definitely not used to is having to let the beads of acrylic dry. Like I feel like it's like nail polish if I touch it in the wrong way it's going to like mess up the entire nail which is not something that I like. I like to just cure it and then it be fully dried. This acrylic did dry pretty quickly which is something that I am happy about because I didn't want to have to wait a long time for these nails to dry. So after I have those two white tips done, I'm going to go ahead and take the color Nude Panther and I'm going to be doing a solid color nail for the middle finger nail. I probably should have started with this nail instead of starting with the ombre nails, but yeah. I also want to say that this nail set is kind of all over the place. I do jump around with this nail set quite a bit just to make sure that those layers of acrylic fully dry and I don't have any issues and mess up the acrylic nails. So I'm just doing quite a lot of beads to cover the entire nail. This one does seem a little bit transparent, but it might be because of how thick I'm applying it. As I said, I do think I picked up a lot of watery beads. Some of these acrylic beads do look pretty good, but for the most part, I feel like they're a little bit runny. I'm not exactly sure, but comment down below what you think as well. I know that a lot of different acrylic brands work differently. Some are more watery or more dry than others, so I'm not exactly sure how to compare this with other acrylic companies, but I do actually really like these products. I do think that these acrylics go on pretty buttery. You don't have any clumps and they do go on very smoothly, so I do actually like the consistency, but I do think that I'm leaning towards the watery side of the acrylic beads. I'm not exactly sure, but again, if you have any tips for acrylic, definitely leave it down below in the comments. Please be nice though since this is kind of my first time doing acrylic in a really long time. I do know that my application is not the best. I am going back with the white acrylic and I'm going to add a little bit more to the tip of the nail since it's pretty clear. I have seen a few people do their acrylic application and do a bead of acrylic at the tip of the nail and blend it back towards the nail bed. So that's just something that I wanted to try for this nail set since I did not apply really thick layers of acrylic. I am just going back with the white acrylic to fill in any gaps that I may have missed with the first layer of acrylic. I'm also going to try to blend out that line from where the nail tip meets my natural nail just to make sure that it blends very nicely when I go to do the ombre. I am also going to be doing the same thing to the index nail as well. I am working in very, very thin layers because I don't like thick nails. I'm also not going to be building a structure with the acrylic because I want to spend as little time as possible with this monomer out in the open. It did smell the room quite a bit and from another room you are able to smell the acrylic and I ended up opening a window as well as pointing a fan towards the window away from the door just to try to get that smell out of the room. It is actually the next day when I'm filming this voiceover and when I went into the nail room it does still smell like acrylic. I did actually clean out the dappen dish as well as the brush and the paper towel is in a ziploc bag in a closed trash can. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure why the smell is still so strong in the room. I am also going to be using this Kira Sky Clear Acrylic All-in-One Powder. I didn't actually get a clear from Not Polish because I knew I had this one and I can use this as acrylic. So I'm just going to be using this as well for the acrylic marble. I didn't actually watch a video beforehand for this technique and I kind of forgot. So I'm just picking up half a bead of the white and half a bead of the clear. And I went ahead and placed it on the middle of the nail. 
And once I placed it on the nail, I kind of like looked at it and I was like, wow, that's way too much white. So I'm just going to quickly try and like spread it out to make it look like I marbled this. This was actually really difficult because I did just want to swipe the acrylic down the nail like I did with the other ones. But with the marble, I think you kind of like marble the colors around on the nail. So yeah, once I looked at that, I was like, it still looks like a little bit too much white. So then I went in with a bead of the clear from Kira Sky and I'm going to be placing that right beside the one that I just did. And before that has a chance to dry, I did apply a little bit more of the white acrylic and try to marble that in with the clear. I do think that doing this technique worked a little bit better than trying to mix those two acrylic colors while it's on the brush, if that makes sense. So yeah, I just completely winged this nail. I actually really like how it turned out for my first acrylic marble. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, but I definitely think it's not bad for my first attempt. I will link everything I'm using down below in the description. Again, because Not Polish did not send this to me, I don't have any discount codes for you guys, but I will link everything down below. I do use some other products at the end of the video, and I will link those down below in the description as well, along with my discount codes for those products. So while the marble dries, I am going back with the color Nude Panther, and I'm going to be doing my cuticle beads for the ombre nails. These I did try to make a little bit on the drier side just to make sure that it doesn't run into my cuticle area. And these beads are so good, like I wish I would have done all of the acrylic beads like these. They did not run into my cuticle and they stayed just where I put them. I actually really liked working with the acrylic like this. So once I have the acrylic placed around the cuticle and sidewall areas, I'm just going to start swiping that color down the nail. I feel like this is actually pretty easy after working with poly gel because you kind of get the feel for what to do for the ombre. So I do think that these nails turned out the way that they did because of all of the work that I've done with poly gel. They are very similar, but at the same time, they're very different, if that makes sense. I do know with acrylic, you have to be pretty quick, otherwise it's going to dry on you. So that's one thing that I was a little bit nervous about, but I actually really like how this set turned out. So I am going down the nail just a little bit to do another bead of the nude color. So I'm just adding another bead of the acrylic a little bit further away from the cuticle area. And again, I'm going to be blending that down the nail as well. And I'm going to be doing the same thing on the index nail as well for another ombre. This bead was a little bit more runny, so I did have it running on my skin, but of course that is a easy cleanup with the acrylic brush. And for the thumbnail, I'm doing another solid color nail and I am using the color Nude Panther for this nail. After the pinky is dry, I did actually go back with the Nude Panther again to try to blend the ombre down just a tiny bit further. And again, I'm going back with Nude Panther over top of the index nail, doing the same thing that I did with the pinky nail. I do want to make sure that these nails are opaque and the ombre is as best as I can get. I am going back to the middle fingernail and doing some more beads of acrylic just to make sure that I have enough color in all of the areas and it's as opaque as I like. I do feel like this color Nude Panther is a tiny bit more transparent than I was expecting. I'm not sure, it may be because I'm applying really thin layers of acrylic. If you do work with acrylic very often and you use this color, let me know down in the comments if you think this color is opaque or if it's just me. I am also going to be doing the ombre for the ring fingernail as well. So again, I'm doing the cuticle bead with the color Nude Panther and I'm just going to blend the acrylic color down into the acrylic marble. This was actually a little bit difficult because my acrylic marble was not smooth at all. So the nude color wanted to just like rest in those crevices and it just made it look a little bit weird. So this ombre was a little bit more difficult than the other ones, but I did manage to get it to work. So here are my acrylic nails right after application. I do think that all of these are dry. This is not bad at all for basically my first time doing acrylic nails. I am going to be taking this 180 grit hand file and I'm going to go ahead and file the nails. I'm not going to be using my e-file because I did these layers of acrylic very, very thin. So I don't want to file off too much of the acrylic color. I'm just going to be reshaping the edges of the nails. I'm then going to take my hand file and I'm going to very gently buff over the surface of the nails. 
just to try to get the surface as smooth as possible without removing too much of the color. Honestly, if you're doing your own nails, you want to encapsulate before filing the nails, especially so you don't ruin your ombres and your nail designs. But I was not about to be doing a acrylic layer for the clear to encapsulate it because the monomer smell was driving me crazy at this point. So I wanted to go ahead and clean that up and switch over to a different product for the encapsulation. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and buff the surface of the nails to get it pretty smooth. I'm going to go ahead and file all of the other nails off camera. So here are what the nails look like after they've all been filed. I'm going to go ahead and do some nail art. I did get these dried flowers from a McCart poly gel kit. It's not really a poly gel kit, but it is like a dried flower kit and it has a clear poly gel. I am going to be using the yellow flowers. To apply the flower to the nail, I am taking the McCart base coat and I'm going to be applying a layer of this onto the nail. I am applying a good layer of this so the flower is able to fully stick to the nail as well. After I have applied the base coat, I'm going to take the yellow flower and using the tweezers, I'm just going to place that flower into the wet gel. I am making sure to push out all of the air bubbles to make sure that the flower is as flat against the nail as I can get. In the McCart kit, you do get multiple containers of these flowers. So I am taking these leaves and I'm going to be cutting this to fit on the side of the nail. I'm going to be placing those leaves on the sides of the nail in between the flowers. Applying the leaves is just going to give this nail a little bit of other colors and make sure that it's not overwhelming for the nail set. I am applying a few of those leaves to the nail. I did take another one of those yellow flowers and I'm going to cut it in half and using the half of the flower, I'm just going to place it on the tip of the nail, again making sure to push down the flower as best as I can get. Some areas of the flower did want to stick up but I just held it down as I was curing it and I didn't have any issues with this sticking up too much. I'm then taking a yellow iridescent glitter and I'm going to be applying this in between those yellow flowers with my tweezers. That is a little bit weird, I'm not sure why I was using my tweezers to apply the glitter but that's just what I used. Once the glitter has been placed, I'm going to cure under the nail lamp for one minute. I am going to be repeating the exact same thing to the thumbnail as well. Overall, I really enjoyed working with the not polished products. I do think they're very good quality and they are definitely worth the price. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is the odor of the monomer and the neutralizer, how it doesn't really eliminate the monomer smell. Maybe this is actually low odor, but because I work with products that don't smell at all, the smell is very strong to me. I don't know, overall I really enjoyed working with acrylic and I do hope to use it again for a future video. So while I was doing the thumb, I was actually having a lot of fun with this one. I feel like the design was turning out so cute and then like all of a sudden, well bam, I like spill the entire container of the glitter. I was frustrated. I just left it for a little bit. So I finished off the nail design. So while the nail was curing, I did try to scoop out the glitter and I was able to save almost all of it. But I thought it was so funny. Of course I had to include this in my videos. I am so messy when I do my nails. Like, it is crazy. So after the nails are cured, I am taking the McCart Clear. This is a poly gel and I'm going to be using this to encapsulate those flower nails. I'm just applying a thin strip of the poly gel onto the nail. I am using my McCart base coat as my slip solution. You can definitely use base coat as your slip. I like to do it occasionally. It does work best if your poly gel is very sticky. I'm just taking my poly gel brush and I'm going to be smoothing out that poly gel to encapsulate those flowers and the glitter. I'm going to be doing the same thing for the middle finger nail to encapsulate that nail as well. Once those nails are encapsulated, I did cure them for one minute. After they're cured, I'm taking a paper towel and some alcohol to remove the sticky layer. Since I didn't encapsulate the other ones, I am taking this Extend Gel from XXC. This is a really, really thick gel. I'm just going to be applying a thin layer of this product to the other three nails to give them a little bit of structure. To make sure that I have a very smooth surface, I am holding my hand upside down for a few seconds just to level out the gel before I cure. Here are the nails after they've been cured. I did remove the sticky layer and I'm going to lightly file over the surface just to get them as smooth as possible. So here are the nails after they have been buffed and this is basically the finished nails. I'm just going to be putting a top coat. 
So I'm going to be using the Nail Addict No Wipe Gel Top Coat. This is one of my favorite gel top coats. And I'm just going to be applying a layer of this onto all of the nails. This is going to give the nails a very beautiful shine and a smooth surface. I am skipping the ring finger nail because I'm actually not quite done with that nail. So I'm just going to continue and add the top coat to all of the other nails. I loved watching how these flower nails transformed from the buffed surface to the shiny gel top coat surface. It was absolutely beautiful to watch. I did go ahead and cure that layer under the nail lamp. I'm now taking these tiny 3D butterflies from one of the XXC poly gel nail kits. To apply these, I am taking the Nail Addict top coat and I'm applying a layer of this onto the ring fingernail. Before I cure that layer, I am taking the McCart Clear Poly Gel and holding the butterfly with some tweezers. I'm going to put a little bit of that clear poly gel on the back of the butterfly and I'm just going to place the butterfly into the wet gel. Products like poly gel are really good to adhere these types of charms to your nails because it holds them on very well. I am going to be doing the same thing for another butterfly lower down on the nail. Once I have those butterflies where I want, I'm going to cure under the nail lamp. Next, I'm taking the Kira Sky Cuticle Oil. This is the lavender scent, and I'm going to be applying this to all of my cuticles and rub it in. And here are the nails. I love these nails so much. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Again, let me know if you have any tips and tricks for applying acrylic and also the monomer smell. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. If you're not already, don't forget to hit subscribe because I do post weekly nail videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!